in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host of this internet ministry. My YouTube username is, I am known as the Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mm. And your snub number seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rum. Hopefully, this period of time will be better for us than the last. Unfortunately, this is a continuation of what was prior. As the wars have not stopped, the murder has not stopped, the divorces have not stopped, the envy and the jealousy has not stopped, evil and wickedness have not stopped. Just because we've crossed into a new period of time. Wickedness or evil continues to progress and replicate itself because so-called good people do nothing. How is this possible with houses of religion on every corner all over the earth filled with good people? I wish all of us in sincerity, a happy new year. I wish to harm or wish no ill to no one striving to be good or righteous. However, I do not wish a happy new year to those who practice evil because without them, every year, would be happy. I send a shout out to my student administer, Brother Andre de Edmond 69, of whom at this time is on a short hiatus for personal reasons, but definitely planning on returning back to this work with a great fire and vigor to aid me in this promotion of reality. I thank that which brought us into existence for this brother having such drive wishing to be a warrior for reality. And behind him slowly but surely many are rising up. This news makes my enemies upset and angry. But under the right condition are born healthy babies. Babies born premature are sick in need of help. And that is something that is called uh, the black conscious movement. This is something those involved in black conscious, what I call Africanized fantasy, this is something they really don't get. A farmer doesn't harvest a crop until it is ripe. You are failing, those of you who are in black conscious. You are failing or experiencing little success because your crop is immature and the right conditions have not appeared in order for your crop to ripen properly. Are you listening to me? Only the starving and the desperate would attempt to consume unripened fruit. <laughs> Think about this as we continue this talk. Before I begin, I'd like to send out a, uh, my voice in sympathy towards the families of those who were killed or suffered great injury, as well as the destruction of property during a, 
or an incredible stream of storms that produced over 40 tornadoes or twisters. Five of these tornadoes touched ground in the St. Louis area, resulting in millions of dollars of property damage, but so far spared minor loss of life. I believe one person was killed, one person critically injured. As a child, I was in a tornado. The weather was peaceful and calm, and suddenly the sky became dark. The rain began to pour and the wind started to speed up. My mother was in terror and she grabbed her children because I had no idea what was going on. She grabbed her children and she took us into, into a place where she believed might be safe and my mother began to pray. I had no idea of what was going on. I saw our chickens being taken up by the wind and blown around. I knew the situation must have been serious due to the way my mother was behaving. We were not hit directly by the twister and suffered little damage, but then again, being poor, having nothing to begin with, and being a child, I would have never really noticed as long as I could eat in any place that could be used for shelter. After the storm, Myself and my other siblings, we went outside and there was little fish, minnows everywhere, and crawdads, crayfish. I guess these, uh, this fish and these crawdads were swept up from a lake that was miles from our home. It's from the lake that uh, I was baptized. When I was baptized, we were made naked and just covered up with a white sheet. And we were dumped under lake water. It was not until I grew into maturity that I began to realize just how dangerous a tornado could be. Of course, our family thanked the Creator for sparing us loss of life and damage to our property. Property was, was very little. So I feel great sorrow and I feel Great pain for those who have also had this experience under such a great horror. On the day before the beginning of a new period of time, it is sad that many New Year's, their day, had to begin on such a horrific and terrible manner. Again, sympathy and condolence. To all of those, regardless to skin color, regardless to gender, regardless to where you are in life. My sympathy and I send condolence, this voice, to the suffering, those who were harmed by this tragedy. And we should treat those the way we wish to be treated, offering any assistance possible. Unfortunately, I must add that this is no shock to those who believe in the prophecy of the prophets of the various religious belief systems as they predict in the last days storms like this will begin to increase along with man-made wars, pestilence, murder, rape, pedophilia, Earthquakes, floods, the sins of man just goes wild. These things do not increase due to the human family acting in, in a generous and righteous manner. But they have become more rebellious against the will of what some of you call God. I say that the human being has become more rebellious against his own nature. And he has decided instead of seeking a higher path in his evolution or his development in his mentality, his intelligence, he has decided to use to, of course, 
we have evolved as far as technology is concerned, as far as a computer, as far as the internet, as far as a rocket going into space and satellites. We have made those type of advancements and developments, but we in our mentality as human beings, we continue to think in the manner lower than that of the beast of the field. So we have become, as those in religion say, we have become rebellious to the will of God. Is that a good or bad thing to rebel against that which brought you into existence? How is this possible that we are so rebellious against God? or that which brought us into existence, our very nature. Instead of evolving, we begin to digress and go backwards. How is this possible when there are mosques and synagogues and churches and other places of worship on every corner all around the world? All claim they represent this God, this Father, this Creator, but yet here, in St. Louis, some of these houses of worship were destroyed. Why would God, if God is the maker and the creator of all things, and he must have some type of hand in the tornado, why would God, uh, why would God want to destroy a house dedicated to worshiping him, her, or it. What does this tell us? And the scriptures, even though there are countless houses of religion, and many claim they are of God, it is written only 144,000 will be chosen to be saved. And there are billions of believers in God. There are so many arrogant Christians who say that those who don't believe in Jesus will go to hell. But clearly, many of them are also destined to go to that fiery place. Also because surely there are more than 144,000 Christians. Both the Bible and Quran, as well as other religious writers, have for the last at least 4,000 years or more have brought warning to the human family, but it seems as though the human being has decided not to heed the call. So if the call is not answered, the scriptures continue to say that the world at one time was destroyed by water. Last time, water. Now this time, the world must be destroyed in fire. I guess that's why they say we are going to hell. And that's our punishment for being in rebellion against that which brought us into existence. That power that y'all call God. People talk about the end of the world, meaning the end of the earth, of which is incorrect, as the earth can survive external fire. The earth can survive all the nuclear weapons being blown up at one time. But the question that remains unanswered, could the human being survive fire like this? Now, never count life out because it is a possibility that the human being could survive nuclear war. But at the same time, he will mutate. What we know of as the human being today because of that mutation and, and that, uh, uh, that life that could be destroyed with that fire, that what we know of today may never be seen again. And of course, uh, that is the prophecy. But that does not mean the human being will be destroyed. This life form, but just that, just those who were in rebellion because after there's a mutation, that which is the new, uh, excuse me, that which is the new 
mutation is no longer that which was destroyed. So with time, as it has happened on many occasions on this planet, the planet will renew itself, making the scriptures teaching of how God will create a new heaven and a new earth in a real sense now come true. The human being is on a path to make the prophecy come true. And why is this? Many of us are greedy. Believing material wealth makes us special or we believe having a certain color of skin or gender makes us special. Or what God we serve or what God we do not serve makes us special. The human family have ignored and have failed to believe in the one real and true religion and that is simply treating one as you would want to be treated a religion that even an atheist can accept because nobody wants to be a slave so why would you want to enslave somebody nobody wants to be discriminated against nobody wants to be mistreated so why would you do that to others so in a religion just simply based on just treat me like you would like to be treated even an atheist or a realist, we can get into something like that. Before God destroys a nation or a people or even an individual because this God we teach has compassion and mercy. He sends to, the, to those of whom are have gone off the correct path. That which brought us into being. You call this being God. Because of compassion and mercy. He brings or she or it. Brings to those of whom. The, the, the God is have a disfavor against. A water is sent to them. A water is given. If you speak Spanish, God of the, or that which brought you into existence with its mercy brings to you a water who speaks Spanish. So you can never say you didn't know because the water uh, did not speak French. They spoke Spanish, the same language that you were. So you can never say you didn't know. But nowadays, we have translators. And you hear the warning in many languages. But regardless, we have become deaf to the warning because we have become comfortable in evil or we fear those in power who control evil. Those who are supposed to represent the saviors like Jesus Christ have failed to be proper examples and warners. The houses of religion have blended in two. See, this is the key. This is your problem. The houses of religion those who claim God, you have now blended into unrighteousness. Instead of separating yourself from the wicked. Throughout the scriptures, God requests separation from the sinners and the wicked. But we see today religious believers actually finding ways to integrate with the wicked. Thus it seems, though the prophecy of the end of the world will be fulfilled, and the warning is, fire, this go round. Unlike those who claim to follow Jesus Christ, claiming and wanting to be saviors of humanity, this ministry does not represent saving anybody. 
However, that which brought us into existence, the creation, y'all call him or her or it God. However, me, I have been brought into existence to speak to both the believer and the non-believers in God. Solely as a warner, not a savior. I could care less whether or not you are saved. That's your business. Your choice. Because like y'all say in religion, you were given free will. So you can take the warning or you can let it alone. That's on you. I could care less if you were saved. Why is that, brother? I thought you was nice. I thought you care about people. I do. I do care about people. I love black folks. And I love humanity. I love the animal life on this planet. I love the earth. I appreciate what was given to me. This life. But when you become rebellious. It's much like. Someone stepping into the street and you tell them, hey man, there's a car coming, watch yourself. And because they don't like the fact I'm wearing a red shirt, I don't, they don't want to listen to me. So they step out into the street, get hit by a car. Why? Because they ignored the warner. Why? Because they didn't like what the warner was wearing. For some reason, they didn't like the warner. And so that's our problem. There are many warners. There are many wonderful teachers. But because we won't listen to them, maybe because they are white or because they are black or because they wear a red shirt or because whatever reason we choose to become prejudiced against somebody, we will rather, and this shows us how dumb some folks are, I would rather get hit by a car than listen to you. So I could care less if you were saved. And also this is because time expires for all things. In your Bible, it teaches us that there's a time for everything. As surely there was a time for you to be born, there's a time for you to die. So time is running out. For you and me and the human being in general. You've had the one that you call Jesus. Prophet Muhammad. And many warners. Many. Maybe your next door neighbor. We've had all kinds of people. And what we do is we ignore them. And we even laugh at them. Because there are many people right now who laugh at Brother Talib. You don't know what you're talking about. So go ahead and laugh. Your days to laugh are now numbered because your time is running out. You will now begin to face and accept your reality. Parents love their children, but when they misbehave, there is only a certain amount of mercy or compassion that be that can be shown until the parents are left with no choice but to bring the rod. Least the child be spoiled. And there is no doubt these children of God have never grown up. After thousands of years under the sound of these religious teachings, they are indeed spoiled people. So I do not speak to spoil you. I think that you should continue ignore warning if you wish to and you will be given the rod. And if the rod, if that is not sufficient, giving you the rod, the human being is on his and her way to being destroyed. It's your choice. Me, myself, I've already made up my mind. Myself, personally, it would be a good thing to destroy all human
human beings, black, white, red, yellow, destroy the human being because you have not proven worthy of life. Destroy all good, bad, all of them. Because you can have two good human beings, but there's no guarantee that they will produce good children. So just to be on the safe side, destroy the DNA. Destroy everything of humanity. So the next life form won't see no sign of you so that you can influence them to cause them to mess up. You are the human being is too intelligent to be behaving and acting the way we do in 2011. You are nothing but an intelligent savage. I will say that again. You are an intelligent savage. There's nothing civil or cordial about you. And the proof of the pudding is something simple like YouTube where y'all can't even have a decent conversation without calling each other names, threatening people's lives, and all that foolishness, as intelligent and civilized as you claim that you are. So I don't have no problem. Well, brother, that means you will die and be destroyed also. So be it. Bye-bye. Nice knowing you. This ministry is not your savior, but a parent's last attempt at trying to talk sense to a rebellious child. I am the one sitting on the side waiting to watch you get your ass whooped. If you listen to the warning, that is cool. If you don't, that's cool. The choice is up to you because there's no doubt. You know better. See, that's it. You know better. It's not like you don't know better. You don't want to do better. Because you have become comfortable in filth, vileness, vulgarity, profanity. You have become comfortable in murder and rape and pedophilia and gender and racial supremacy. You enjoy these things now. So, if you are no good on top of the ground, then perhaps it is better for you to be sent under the ground. Prophecy, brothers and sisters, friends and family associates, and even enemies, because light shines on all of us. Welcome to the real truth. Welcome to the light. Prophecy does not have to come true. It can always change if the behavior of the people change. The human being, the only life form to become extinct by its own hand, not by a tornado, not by uh, some calamity, universal calamity, some comet or something coming out the sky, banging on the earth, the human being is on its way to be destroyed by its own hands. At the same time, supposed to be the most intelligent life on this planet, and that's what makes this whole thing so pathetic and pitiful. For some reason, the so-called human being believe that you can exploit and mistreat other human beings. You can place all the animals in zoos and make pets out of everybody. Everything. Destroy habitation. Exploit the animal life as well as the planet itself. And you think that there will be no consequence. I hope fighting for oil, diamonds and rubber, fighting over free human labor, other precious metals, and so forth. And the belief that you, because you're white, or maybe because you are black, for some reason y'all think, whatever reason, because I, I have more money, or because I'm a man, for some reason, all these thoughts, I hope they are worth the human being 
these feelings of superiority. I hope that all these things are worth what we call humanity becoming extinct. People fight over money and other material things and die not to be able to take none of this with you. You can't take gold with you. You can't take the oil or the rubber. You can't take nothing with you. Your thought that you're superior over somebody. You can't take none of these things with you to the other life. There is, if, if there is one, there is no evidence that gold, silver, oil, all the things that we have given value and importance that we have become obsessed with, there is no uh, evidence that we can take these things with, with us to the other life if there is one. And look how we become so obsessed with these things, making them so, so valuable and important that we are willing to risk human extinction. And that's sad. The, the book of the Muslim called the Holy Quran says, Man surely is in loss. So I am only a one. And time is running out. And God, or that which brought us into existence, is running out of patience. You and I, we have been warned. It is sad that the human being has become one that enjoys negativity. They thrive on seeing another suffer from bad luck or causing harm to others. Most of these so-called reality shows that are scripted do not show human beings behaving in a compassionate and righteous manner. We watch them to see people act stupid, the violence, be disrespectful and vile to one another. Even on YouTube, we run negativity in the ground. We love negativity. Y'all like to see beef between this person and that person. So we can use that as some form of sick entertainment. We can enjoy the drama of two people going back and forth. Trying to demean and degrade one another. My last year, New Year's resolution, was to do what I could to create black unity and that call will continue into this year never stop but basically those videos are ignored gaining probably less than a hundred views and no hands are, are offered to reach out in that unity It's a, it was a damn shame. As any progress made for we as a people must be made by the connection of these hands with the best interest of us as a whole. With our people at heart. Maybe this is why black unity has yet to reach that point because people are hiding behind black unity for a self agenda. And like all our enemies before us, we are our worst enemies. But all our enemies outside of us, these who are black, use the name of black unity and the name of black liberation and struggle, they don't use it for the benefit of all of black America, those of us who are the descendants of slaves here. They have a 
sub-agenda to seek an unknown purpose. And I will say this again because it is true. The only one that openly reached out and answered the call for black unity that I strove or strive for was a brother called Tima. And we began an association, not a friendship. Many times we use the word friend when it is an association in hopes to build an alliance that in turn would turn into a friendship. Because the root of this unification was black unity. Excuse me a second. Without black unity, only an association could be possible. Certainly not a friendship due to the nature of what is involved in exercising black unity making such possible. So those not involved in anything sit back and judge those trying to accomplish something. Now, some like this union. Many did not. At the same time, let me remind you, those who judge myself and those who judge Brother t while they sit back and judge what we're doing or done, they do absolutely nothing. They have not united with kindred spirits, but of course, they can sit back and critique others. These same <laughs> frauds, these same hypocrites, things I call them, they can judge me. They can judge Brother t -Mai. They can critique the association or the alliance built between myself and Brother t -Mai. They can judge, but at the same time, they always say, don't judge people. They are the first judge. They are the judge, jury, and executioner. They are the biggest critics. But at the same time, they'll tell you quick, we should not judge. When it comes to white folks. Now, when we're talking about another black person, oh, find something negative and run it into the ground. Judge them and talk about them like a dog. But when, of course, it comes to white folks or anybody else, don't judge people. <laughs> oh, demons. They are demons. You don't do nothing, but you have a lot of nerve that come here and try to talk about somebody, you thing. You're not a human being, you're a thing. And then they try to draw attention to themselves by using my name or using Brother Timon's name. Because that's really the bottom line. They want some of the, some of the so-called YouTube celebrity that Brother Timon has gained and myself. So here they come to criticize trying to draw attention to their pitiful, oh man, I wish, oh I wish I could get the cussing, but I, yeah, I'm not, that's not me. I could, but that's not me. You know, I understand us and profanity, but a lot of us, we just go overboard. It's not necessary. And it's not necessarily, it's not, <laughs> it's not necessary here. Unfortunately, I had to make the decision to disassociate myself, removing myself from such alliance. And I made my reason very clear. But of course, to those with questionable intent and the malice of heart, who loves just the kid, who loves, as we say in the hood, loves to keep shit stirred up. My reason for 
for for removing myself from this alliance, that reason for them was not acceptable. So those who were not united to nobody with doing anything, doing nothing, they decided to manufacture their own reasoning, bringing attention to the obvious. There was no need to decipher anything when it was made clear the reason. There is no reason for me to deceive or lie about anything that was my own personal affair, whereas I gained nothing. There was no money involved. There was no loss to none of the parties involved except the divorce of an association mistaken for friendship. Because again, the only reason why there was a friendship because there had to be a love for black unity. And I decided that Brother Timon did not love black people. So if you have no love for black people, you cannot be my friend. So the association or the alliance cannot turn into a friendship because you have decided that you don't want to love that which I love because this topic of black unity, that's what brought us, uh, that's what caused us to meet to begin with. So we have mistaken an association with friendship. I have no idea of how long this alliance or this association lasted. I was told by my haters that it was for six months. And during this period of time, both parties must show signs of compromise in order to benefit black unity. Just having an alliance or a so-called friendship, or just to say friendship, because one is indeed, you must one must indeed be for black unity. While another essence is not. Before I continue, may I say this. I am so proud of my friends and subscribers for being the people who you are. To dissolve this alliance, of course, for me, was a hurtful thing. And I had great plans. But time reveals things and sometimes things happen for a reason to benefit you even though at the time it brings us pain. So this departing of the ways with no doubt a hurtful thing because finding friends is very difficult nowadays. But, like they say in the Christian church, it's very difficult for me to view you as a friend if you, don't, if you can't find a friend in Jesus. So it's very difficult for me to view you as a friend and your actions and your words are hurtful to those of whom I love. The black man and woman of America, those born descendants of slaves. There is no doubt for some to view my alliance with Brother Tima was a beautiful and wonderful example of our being able to come together for the best interest of the whole concentrating on a common purpose, a common goal. Again, the bond is based in black unity. After, as my haters say, after six months of careful evaluation, along with some recent events, I have had to come to the conclusion that Tima, although willing to say, willing to say with his mouth, talk black unity, 
but really was not interested in this. Incapable of fulfilling what is needed to embrace black unity. Again, my friends and subscribers, you are wonderful. And you demonstrated great maturity because your opinions that I've seen express, of course, sadness. And we should be sad. Your opinions express sadness and understanding of which this was the proper response, showing your maturity while others attempted to bring attention to themselves, trying to make a name for themselves, being a parasite off a failed union. A chance to attack Brother Tima, a chance to attack Angus number seven while we both are, 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 are vulnerable. Kick a man while he's down. That's their hope. But you have not affected me at all. And I really doubt that you have affected Brother Tima. So Brother Tima continues to roll on out doing what he believes he needs to do, and I continue to roll out doing and saying what I believe, not believe, what I know needs to be done, because I don't believe in nothing. This reality stupid is based on facts, not belief. So you have these demons, most of them are black, trying to make a name for themselves. They hope that the weak-minded, and I'm glad that they exist, because it separates the weak-minded from both myself and Brother t -Mont. Keep them away from us. And these demons, they hope that the weak-minded will gravitate towards them in that, and, and in this, I'm happy, because this process continues to Separate, like they say in the scriptures, the wheat from the tar. Keep those weak bones away from me. So I also know who is who. So Brother t knows who is who. Just because people get married does not mean that marriage will work. This was a union. It was tried, but it could not. It simply just could not work. So it was best to bring it to an end early so not to waste no more time or continue the illusion of some black unity because this union was not black unity. And I give just a few uh, reasons of why my alliance with Tmot was not black unity. And I'm not going to speak about this topic no more. But I said it's awesome. I feel no shame. In fact, I feel great pride. And I still continue to have the utmost respect for Brother t -Mont. There's no shame to reach your hand out to another brother and sister and try. There are many of us who cannot say we have tried to do nothing with anybody. So, Brother t -Mont, you should not feel shame. I should not feel any type of shame or embarrassment because we try a union, even though you knew, you knew where I stand. I knew exactly where you stood. But we tried anyway. And this could have been a friendship, but this friendship must be based in black unity because that's why I'm here. I'm not interested in making friends. I'm interested in uplifting a people who have been in the mud and the mire for over 400 years. To lift up, lift up, up, up out a horrendous condition. The only friends I want are those interested in reaching out for these Lost, made deaf, dumb, and blind, and pathetic and pitiful people who depend on another man for their existence. That I no longer.
longer want. And you don't love them like I do. And you hold on to the ways of the oppressor too much. And don't want to let the oppressor's ways go. And you are, and you have made it clear that you are loyal to the oppressor. And I condemn, so this marriage can't work. And being loyal to the oppressor, <laughs> definitely is not black unity. So those who do not want to accept my reason for removing myself from this alliance or severing my ties from this channel called the Minister of Truth of Georgia, if you don't want to accept my reason, that's your business. So you can continue to be feel free to go and match, manufacture anything that you want for your own sinister purpose rather than for myself I have no reason to lie or deceive anybody about anything there's nothing to gain of substance in fact I lost because in Tima we could have had a wonderful friendship and again like I say it's the loss of what a, what potentially could have been a beautiful friendship, lifelong. But we are on two sides of the fence. And he'd rather choose the side of the oppressor. And that I cannot do. So this alliance is not black unity. There are those filled with wicked hearts who attempt to spoil anything of good because they are nothing. So in order to make themselves feel worth anything, they attempt to bring others down. Usually it is jealousy and envy. The reality of this temple comes from the brain of the one known as Talik Ibn Ra. So there is jealousy and envy from many who see people friends and subscribe to this channel based on my opinion not the opinion of the Bible everything that's here at the Realities Temple comes from here the Realities Temple is not based in this the Realities Temple is not based in this the Realities Temple is based on this and that's what I want for you. I want you to base your thought, your opinion on you. You can use this as a reference. You can use this for a reference. But I want you to be you and express yourself in your reality, not my reality, your reality. Because when you came into being, you came here by yourself and everything that you see and everything that you do, that's your experience. I can buy the apple, you can buy the apple, but we experience, even though we're doing the same thing, we experience, we experience things similar, but we're different because you have your reality of how you bite the apple, and I have my reality. But see, and that's called being an individual. We are similar and we can work together. We, we understand biting the apple. But we think for ourselves and we're doing our own thing. But when you become part of this and you become part of that, then no matter how you really experience biting the apple, somebody going to teach you how it's supposed to taste, what you're supposed to do. In other words, they're making a slave out of you. Everything that comes from here, from this reality temple, comes from my mind. And they don't like it. It is not the opinion of the Bible or Quran represents, but this is my revelation. 
And those who want to talk about me, they can only offer that which has been around for thousands of years. They have to reference Bible, Quran, or something. Nothing comes from them. Because I guess God or the creation, they have never experienced nothing on their own. They have nothing to reveal. They have no reality. So they have to borrow, they have to borrow somebody else's, they have to borrow somebody else's reality and wonder what they did 4,000 years ago. <laughs> Woo! Everything flowing from here originates from me. And I do not seek converts. I hope to inspire you to also go within yourself and think what you want to think, not what, what someone wants you to think. To believe, to believe, to think. Because those who gave you, when you, when you believe in something, then somebody else is telling you how to think. And those who can cause you to believe and they tell you how to think, then they can control. They can control you because they know how to control what you think and what you accept it as thought. And that is a form of slavery. Something I am strongly against. You should not want to be a slave to nobody. No white man, no black man, no person at all. You should not want to be a slave to a bear or a goat. You should not want to be a slave to nothing, even no God or some spiritual being. You should want to be free. I am against slavery of any kind. You are not born into the world to be the slave of some somebody or something. They did not give you any life. Some of you, well, God gave gave me. You can't prove nothing. Well, if He gave you life, then go to your master. Show me. Who the one gave your life? The only, the only viable and real thing that you can say is that show me is your mother and your father. And some of y'all hate your mothers and hate your fathers. You hate your physical mother. You hate your physical father. But for some reason, you are in love with a God that you never met. Because somebody tricked you to teach you to believe in what they want you to think. I am strongly against any type of form of slavery. At one time or another, uh, this supported, regardless whether that slavery is physical or mental. These uh, wicked persons of whom I just learned due to his now dislike for me, because see, I'm talking about Brother uh, Timot. Timot knows what happened between us. And I have said what I need to say. I did not unsubscribe from Brother Timot's channel. I did not defriend him or any of those things. I just decided to sever my association with his channel and it would be better that we no longer interact it is in the best interest of myself and him because we are on two different paths and since he is loyal to that path I cannot associate myself even uh, even looking in that direction. But Timot, he has, of course, taken me off his friends list and, 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 and all like that type of thing. I don't know if he took me off, his, off Facebook. I don't know. Whatever. That's fine and dandy. That's, that's good. But it is sad that Brother Timot would 
befriend those who talked about both of us like a dog. But he feels this hurt, I guess, because of this divorce that he runs to them and their negative, wicked videos. The same people who talked about him like a dog called him a hypocrite and all kinds of other stuff. But I guess when you really don't have no friends, you have to go to your enemy. <laughs> And the only friends that you have are those who like your negativity speaking against your own people. So being hurt, you run to those who hate you. <laughs> I don't understand that logic. And it is sad. Now, these same people Made no videos to inspire and encourage you in your alliance and to keep you strong in black unity and push you in the right direction. But they can come out and bring all the negativity. But make no videos encouraging you to seek oneness with your own. And now you go to these same wackos to crown their shoulders. <laughs> oh, that's, that's how weak can you get. Sometimes things happen so we can see better and things become exposed. That has happened in this case. I am more and more confident and happy that I have made such a, de a decision seeing this man embracing those who hated and were jealous of both of us. Black unity does not need weak people. t -Mont has proven to be a weak man. Now, one of these trolls, they would like for me to say their YouTube username, but I, I won't because they are nothing to me. Mean nothing to me. One of these YouTube trolls, I have one block out of everybody, and, and, and this is the reason why. I did not block this troll because of fear of what he was saying, but quite to the contrary. I usually don't block and I don't block. But y'all, in my old age, it seems certain things you just can't tolerate no more. I have already verbally smashed this person time and time again. It is boring. And it just becomes sickening even just to view the childish and infantile comment. That's the reason why. Boom. That's the reason why you was blocked. Not because of anything that you say. Because what you're talking about don't mean nothing. I blocked you because I'm just... I just don't want to see your corny comments, period. And in my old age, I just, I just can't tolerate the foolishness no more like I used to. What kind of characters these wackos and nutcases are? How can you comment on, a, on another association? How can you comment on my alliance with T-Mont when you have nothing to show of your own? Where is your alliance? Where's your unity? You don't have nothing. This is why you are in another person's business. You have you are part of no group. You have no unity, no allies with nobody. You belong to no organization. You are in marriage with nobody here. A marriage is sometimes difficult to maintain. Things happen. These Wackos, they ignore my reasons for nullifying this association and concentrate solely on the fact a phone call wasn't returned. A phone call not being returned was just one of a number of factors and they make the obvious a big deal. If I wish to deceive, I would have never mentioned it. 
Because I already knew, being the kids that y'all are on YouTube, many of you are, I already knew that you were going to say that. No big deal. <laughs> you really must think I'm dumb. I know how you think already. But you brought it up. You had your say so. I'm still here. Full of fire, vigor, no effect. I make many of you very upset because I already know how you think. This is why you find it difficult to debate or argue with me. And that is your fault, not mine, because you don't think for yourself. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Really, my friends and subscribers. I'm so happy that my friends and my subscribers, y'all ignored this foolishness. Because you know what the you know what the real deal is. We have to stay on the right path. We don't have time to be dealing with it doesn't make no difference what happened, really. It's sad that the alliance is no more. I told you my reason. Let us move forward. It don't exist no more. So now what y'all gonna talk about? Wackos. I'm so happy. My my friends and my subscribers, y'all some very mature people. Oh, I love you. That's why I can move forward. And that's what makes me so strong. Because y'all got me. Woo! I can't speak for others. Because people divorce or they leave a group or organization. It doesn't mean they hate the organization. They hate their ex-husband or wife. Just because they left. I left the Nation of Islam years ago. But as many know, I am still very much in love with Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. I always, that's my heart. My, my spiritual teacher to the day that I leave this planet is Elijah Muhammad. If it was not for Elijah Muhammad, the chances of me being here right now is almost void. Null and void. Did I use that correct? Null and void? I wouldn't be here without Elijah Muhammad because it's true. I could say very negative things about Elijah Muhammad, Nation of Islam, Malcolm, but I'm not. No need to. I choose not to because I am sincere in black unity. And if I'm going to speak at all, I'm going to speak positivity. That's what we need. Unity, positivity, and love. We all have our faults. We all have our errors. We must uplift each other in our positive things. We should not seek to tear one another down. Now, an opinion that is detrimental, that's different. I do not hate or dislike t period. So don't get it twisted. At this time, I choose not to interact with him. And I do not want to be associated with his channel at this time. If I saw him in person, I would treat him with respect because that's how he has treated me. He's never been unkind to me. I do not hate or dislike. And perhaps, he is upset due to the way this divorce or this this association, this my uh, severing my ties with him. Maybe he is upset how I done this, how it was handled. But that is what happens when we don't return phone calls, when we purposely. Decide 
we do not want to communicate with our wife, our children, our job, or whatever, when we decide that's the type of attitude we want to have, then there's a consequence. I am very sure he has unsung my channels and defriended me and all like that. Maybe he's even blocked me. But this is expected. As most, even in divorces, you know how people uh, behave like little children. It shows the love that they claim they had never was there to begin with. So maybe you can say the same thing about me. Oh, you never was friends with him to begin with. And I will accept that critique. And I told you I was not friends. I was an associate. I was, a, I was an ally seeking black unity. There was no friendship. We say friendship, but it was an association. Because I don't do my friends like that. And my friends communicate with me. When I call them, they return my call in a appropriate, in a, in a manner of which we can tolerate. That was not, that did not happen in this because we were associates. And his actions shown without a doubt, nothing but association. Nothing but an alliance trying to seek black unity and it just did not work. Again, this shows that an illusion of black unity was given. But that's all that it was. And knowing this, I chose to remove myself as I re represent reality, not illusion, fantasy and belief. These jealous, wicked, dark Europeans call me a deceiver, but people don't deceive unless there's a benefit or something to gain, and I have gained nothing. And telling you, and telling you someone didn't return a, a call is quite obvious. How is that deception? An attempt at deception or credit card application or bank loan or phone contracts, whereas they on purpose make the writings very small and give you countless papers using terms you have no idea of what is being said. And they already know you will not read until it is, until it is too late. If indeed you will read when you get in trouble. There is nothing complicated about nothing I do or say. As the intent is not to deceive but make clear and bring understanding as one should think for themselves. I am not looking for converts to a religion or group. If you think for yourself, even if under a religious influence, we will become on the same page. This is why my friends and subs are not impressed by those spreading malice of the so-called quite obvious. Again, I do not hate or dislike Tima as a person. He was respectful to me. He's never said nothing out of the way to me. But at this, at this time I found again. And I'm saying this over and over. Why do you keep repeating the same thing over? So that maybe you can get it clear in your head. It is best at this time for me to separate myself. No longer interact with him for my sake. And I will give just a few more reasons of why uh, t -Mont, my alliance with t -Mont could only bring an illusion of black unity. But he is really not interested in it. t -Mont has a problem with opinion. Of differences of opinion. He is unable to compromise his position for the benefit of a group. He shown this earlier in his own Council of Twelve. Some of y'all might remember that. 
bringing people together of different beliefs for the best interest of people. He could not tolerate anybody speaking against America or Caucasians in general. He basically told me at one time to go back to Africa. Here's a black man telling me to go back to Africa. Now, he would later apologize and I would give him the benefit of a doubt when it came to this union, this alliance. Meant, this alliance was meant not for friendship, but seeking black unity. Speaking with him on several occasions, he just demonstrated, again, great anger if you spoke out or said something against Christianity in general or white America. I don't need to be speaking with someone. I cannot talk the way that I talk. And the person that I'm supposed to be working with can't stand what I'm saying. This was a sign I could not ignore. And a warning. So, when he gets angry like that, I have to find some way uh, to um, cease the conversation and hang up until he cools off. You cannot work with someone with that type of attitude. Until this day, I do not understand some religious believers that become outraged when someone questions or speaks negative or just questions their belief system. I do not become upset with folks because they speak ill of those who disbelieve in God. Somebody told me or left on my page that people that don't believe in God are baby eaters. Whatever. No big deal. He gets upset with those who, who remind white America of his wicked past and evil against dark people. How can you stand? With black unity, when you get upset over whites being talked about, even though what is being said is true and respectful. One of T-Mont's videos was found on a neo-Nazi site, and he tried to blow it off like it means nothing. Now, here are some racist Caucasians who take your video and put it on that site. And why do you think they put it on your site? They, they put it on their site because, because they see a black man that hates black folks just as much as they do. They found an ally in a black man who view black just like savages as they view them. And Kima just laughs it off, seeing no problem. But you stand for black unity? Kima screams personal responsibility when it comes to black people. But he ignores any for other people, especially Caucasian folks. The government of America has no responsibility for slavery or the taking of lands from native people or any of these other atrocities that happened a long time ago. Whatever a long time ago is. A long time ago could be five minutes. Five minutes is a long time ago, especially like if you was an ant or a bee, because that lifespan is only maybe three weeks. He would agree that, 9, that the 9-11 rescuers should be helped with their medical bills, but under his logic, nobody told them to go rescue nobody. Since they made that decision on their own, they should take personal responsibility and handle their own bills. Why should I pay using taxpayers' money to compensate these people and their families who didn't rescue nobody? Now, that's what gets me. The person that died in 9-11, they, they don't have no use for no money. They, they're dead. Why do their families get paid? Why do their families get compensation? They, were not, they did not get affected. They, they lost a loved one. See? Your logic don't even make any sense because I lost my loved one, my ancestors, who were slaves. I lost them. And you tell me to go about my business. But here these people, 
they lost loved ones, but for some reason, they should be compensated. They didn't do nothing. I was never a slave, so I should not be compensated. They were not involved in no rescue or anything, but it's all right. Compensate them. Compensate the Jewish state of Israel that was not involved, but the majority of them people who live in Israel today, they were not involved in a holocaust, but they get reparations even to this day from the United States, Germany, and Britain, and probably other places that we don't know nothing about. That's all right with you. But when it comes to black folks, don't give them niggas, that's your favorite word that you like to call us, don't give them niggas anything. Since, since uh, there's hypocrisy. There's hypocrisy in that. And being a hypocrite, you cannot support black unity. How can you support black unity having not one video expressing positivity, love for your people? This channel, Timas channel, close to 400 videos on his channel. How many express love and positivity to those he claims he cares about? He believes that talking about somebody like a dog will make them better. He believes, uh, now at the same time, doesn't his Bible say, as a man thinketh, so is he. If this is what you are calling the people, then you are only verifying what they already view themselves to be. Using his poor logic and understanding, his daughter in school, should be called all types of negative names in some attempt to learn, make them learn what they are having difficulty learning. Teachers having this type of mindset will be terminated on the spot. When you have a child with learning disability, the child is placed in a lower class or given special attention to come up with something to help improve the child. Name calling, telling the child how dumb they are, will not make the child learn. Nor does calling black people niggas, whores, traps, thugs, talking about how we live in niggerdom, that will not help improve the condition of those who know no other life. Just like he has become comfortable. Being a Christian. Calling himself a Christian. A Christian American at that. America. You being a citizen. That was forced on your ancestors. That's why you are an American. Christianity. That's a religion that was forced on your ancestors. Christianity was never practiced by those blacks kidnapped from America. You cannot support black unity with this attitude. Because the same way they are thugs, whores, traps, whatever you want to try to call us. The same way they are those things. That's the same way you are Christian and American. You know no other life than what has influenced you here. And at one time, you were just like them. But for, all, but for some reason... You become hot to ditty. You in the up, like they said, you in the up in it, Negro now. Now you've got the nerve to try to become judge, jury, and executioner because these supposed to be like you. And what makes you so great? When you just become, you just become a better functioning slave with the white man's name, white man's religion, the white man's citizenship. He continues to make mafia of black people such as mockery of our so-called ghetto names. And they indeed may be ghetto, but it is our expression of an attempt to have something of our own and be who we are, expressing our own creativity. It just needs to be more in line 
with the language and means. He laughs at so-called ghetto names, but finds pride in carrying the ex-slave master's name. He probably has no idea what a Derek is or who was the son of Grayson. How can you support black unity embracing the continued use of names forced upon our ancestors? How can you support black unity saying you support America and this state of Israel that was formed by killing and murdering other people? I had to decide if, and make a move. I had to remove myself from this channel called the Minister of Truth of Georgia. Because it represents the support of evil. You are an American citizen and you are loyal to America. Then remember from 1669 to 1914, there is an invasion by the European. They conquered the native people. Mexicans, of course, black folks. African, all over this earth. Did, did they do it pretty? No. By extreme violence. This is what you support. Do you forget at one time that the Taliban, who are supposed to be the enemies now, the United States aided Maybe even help create the Taliban. They put, they helped put Saddam Hussein in power. The Shah of Iran. This nation has done great evil. You have a love for your oppressor. And have become comfortable in wickedness. America broke all. I believe it was over a hundred, about a hundred treaties. America broke all its treaties with the Native American people. All except I was told one. The black people in America, we were promised. 40 acres and a mule. Did you receive your 40 acres and your mule? Did your ancestors know? So they are liars. They are murderers and liars. The so-called Civil Rights Bill of, what was it, 1965? 1965? It must be re-voted on every 25 years. If you are an American citizen, why do they have to continue to uh, revote and approve black people having the right to vote? I thought you was a citizen. <laughs> Here's a black man who is proud. I call him a dark European. But he's proud. So. You have uh, a man who claims that he supports black unity. Not only are we to support black unity, but we need to also support righteous behavior. That's what he claims. When it comes to black people, he expects us to be holy and righteous. But he is 
patriotic to a nation that has not been righteous or holy since its inception or since it has been conceived. We always talk about slavery and how long ago slavery was. But let me give you a couple of an examples of the wickedness of America that is of today that this man is loyal to thus giving me no choice but to remove myself and break this alliance that gave the illusion of black unity because this man he likes the talk maybe the words but the reality is he has no intent or does not really understand what black unity is. In the 1980s, <coughs> excuse me, in the 1980s, we already know that the United States government committed an atrocity, the genocide of the native people, and placed them on reservations. Were these reservations the best land? No. The United States government placed the Native American people on land where they could not be self-sufficient, where they could no longer hunt buffalo, or do anything for themselves, the land could barely support life. That's the type of land that the beautiful, innocent white people did to the Native American people. But you don't want to hear that because it was a long time ago. Well, let us bring it a little bit up to date to the 1980s. Jimmy Carter was president, and it was found that uranium or plutonium, I believe it was uranium, uranium was found on one of these Native American reservations reserved for the inferior, because that's what the Native people were, reserved, reserved for the savages. So uranium was found on the land of the savages. And the plan, Jimmy Carter, who runs around here lately trying to build houses, trying to show how good he is, but as President of the United States, Jimmy Carter attempted to take action to take the land away from these Native people so that the United States government could exploit the uranium. This, I guess, team out would view as a wonderful thing. Good people. Yeah, all around good folks. But there was so much an outcry about this wickedness that Jimmy Carter and the rest of his mafia had to do an about face. And I guess they came to some type of agreement with the native people there where they would share in the exploitation of the land. But this goes to show you how wicked the children of the slave master is. A wolf in sheep clothing always smiling in folks face. And this is what we must understand. This government has proven itself to be liars and deceivers. Once someone lies to you, once they deceive you, y'all know how it is when you are in relationship with men and women, or both, however y'all want to roll, when somebody cheat on you, and they lie in their cheating, and they deceive you in their cheating, you don't never trust them again, unless, of course, you like, you are like or have the mindset of, Timot, 
who is so in love with the liar and the deceiver that no matter what happens, I'm going to remain loyal to you. Have you received your 40 acres and a mule, black people? No, you did not. You know why? Because they wanted to keep us in a slave-like condition. So you, just like the Native American people, we could not be self-sufficient. That's why they didn't give you 40 acres and a mule. Because you would take the mule and work your land and you would be self-sufficient. They did not want that. And as long as you're dependent on somebody. And that's why a lot of women who are in some of these, and some men, let us be fair. Some people, even children, are in these abusive relationships because... They are dependent on their abuser. And we know no other life except being under the control of the Caucasian, racist Caucasian people of America. But as long as they smile in your face, we go for it. Just like the abuser. Don't worry, baby. I'll never beat you in the face again. Don't worry. Don't worry, little boy. I'll I, I never mess with you. Don't, don't tell nobody. We always fall for the smile and the fake handshake. But when we view the actions of the president, we view the actions of the past, how could you trust a nation built on murder, the rape of people, the lynchings of people, the dis the endless discrimination. But you stand for black unity since when? And then you make videos bragging about you and your white friends. You do this so you can show your master because you have become a modern slave. You want to show your master that everything is all right. I got your back. And you become like a guard dog. Don't jump on the innocent white people. Please. They innocent. But they take land with uranium on a reservation. Yeah, they do that, but that's all right. They spread terrorism. Before there was a word terrorism, there was no word terrorism. Until they became terrorized. But as long as they was the terrorizer. As long as they went around the earth. Doing their evil. Then it was alright. But now. Terrorism comes to their door. The chickens come home to roost. What you have sown in other places. Now is showing up on your doorstep. Now all of a sudden it's terrorism. And you deserve it. You should have been getting terrorized a long time ago. And the American people, some of y'all who have sense, you realize that your government, those people in power, don't have your best interests at heart. And some of y'all are raising your voice, coming out of the world works, challenging your government, because your government bringing you terrorism, because they didn't let you know what they've been doing for hundreds of years. And your new lawmakers ain't no better than the old ones are. I'm very sure if they could enslave some new life force to benefit them, they would. Let alone talk about black folks. I'm talking about anything. They just love to enslave. That's why you got zoos and aquariums enslaving fish and enslaving other animals. Y'all love to enslave things. Including human beings. This white gentleman, Caucasian gentleman, Tim Wise. This is not a long time ago. Tim Wise, I heard him and I quote. He was saying that housing discrimination is worse in 2006 than it was in 1966. But that's a long 
after a long period of time between 1966 and 2006. So here's a Caucasian person in his research has found that discrimination against black people in housing is worse. So where is this change? Where is this equality? What are you talking about? You have become the world's greatest slave. A black man just was released from prison due to DNA. And chances are, I even heard one of these other white guys say, and they claim they are now racist and all that other crap, but they have to admit, chances are, he spent 30 years in prison because he was black. And when y'all begin to accept the reality of it and talk about, well, this is just a certain, now a whole lot of cases. Let us say 95%. And chances are, this black man, he will be released when he is released. He will smile because he's just so happy that he's out of jail and try to forget what was done to him. And in his state, it's, it's a possibility they might give him a few million dollars and he'll go about his business but the injustice, how many other black men or any person that's innocent, they know they are innocent. But this is what Tiamat support. He supports those who send innocent people to prison. He supports those who overly punish those who may commit an offense. This is what you support, proud American. Tiamat supports those who have created the American prison system, which is probably more than 80% black. I wonder how that happened. Because at one time, it was almost all white. Now, all of a sudden, it flipped the script. Now, it's all black. We know that many black people go to prison unjustly. We know that the laws and the this system is designed to harass dark people. How do you get in jail? They have this three strikes law, even for trivial stuff. So if you steal a bag of potato chips on the third strike, it's over. Justification to keep you locked up. About 2.3 million people are in jail. On a per capita basis, this equates to twice as many as in South Africa, home of apartheid, more than three times Iran, one of the axes of evil, but you have more people in your prisons than Iran, three times more. Six times, six times the Chinese prison population. No society in history has imprisoned as many people as the United States of America. Are they being imprisoned justly or unjustly? Of course we know that you do have people who are predators that need to be behind bars. One in nine prisoners are male blacks. There are more 17-year-old black males in prison than there are in college. And those young males that go to college don't get financial support. They try to, they have a little aid or whatever, but you can go to prison because I know when I was locked up, it cost them $600 a day. $600 a day for me. But, if, but they won't give me a dime once I get free. But they're willing to keep me locked up. $600 a day. 
the average yearly cost to keep someone locked up in a prison jail from forty to sixty thousand dollars a year. A lot of y'all are good at math. Times that two point three million. And really that's just the prison population is not counting mental institutions and jails and other things, places, wherever they can incarcerate folks. Some hospitals incarcerate people in America. You don't stay there a long time, but you can be incarcerated under the guise of mental health. Five percent of the world are Americans, but yet 25 percent of all the prison prisoners in the world are Americans. America, the United States, the goody two-shoe country, prohibits the importation of goods made through forced labor or prisoners. But yet, at the same time, American prisons produce 100% of all military helmets, ammunition, belts, and bulletproof vests. When I was locked up, we were made in the guise of treatment. And see, that's what they do in the prison system. It's treatment. It's a part of their rehabilitation. You're made to do free labor or you're made to do very minimal underpaid labor. Extremely underpaid. A dollar an hour, 50 cents an hour, stuff like that. 93% of domestically used paints, 36% of home appliances, 21% of office furniture, which allows America to compete with factories in Mexico. And guess what? And those who don't want to work get solitary confinement. Those who are in these prisons, if you don't work, there's some kind of punishment. And so TMOC supports the new modern slavery. Not just slavery in the mind like he suffers, but new physical slavery. Because it's about making money in these prisons. That's why they want they got everybody locked up. And see, you don't care what the person get locked up, the average person, we don't care nothing about them no more. <laughs> oh man. And this is what you support. And we know the history of this country. Not only has America, white racist America, been evil to dark people, but prior to us, they even have been wicked to themselves, ask the Irish, or the Polish or the Jews, anybody that was outside of England. Talk to me. And this is what you support. And t -Mott talks about black unity, but you brag about your Caucasian friends. Because you want to show the master, I, I ain't like him, sir. Your friends. So I question T Mont buddies, your your friends. Because he is a black man. Talking about he cares about the black community. But on his page, he shows his people no love. He paints his own people like savages. So so savage that even neo Nazis use his videos on their website. And if you really was a friend to t -Mock, white man, then you would tell him and ask him, why are you talking, why are you painting your people like that? It's one thing to talk about somebody, but to paint us like savages and animals, that's different. And that's what you have done, because you don't show no other side. You just show how bad somebody can get. And then as far as being bad, this whole nation is bad. The same thing that you complain about what black folks don't do. There are white thugs. White women who are trapped in whores. Matter of fact, who do you think we learn all this behavior from? We learn it from them. 
It comes from our best society. We didn't go to Africa and learn it from Africa. We didn't learn it from China or anywhere. We learned all this ill behavior from them. You're a Christian because of them. Everything we are comes from them. We are nothing but walking white people with black skin. So when a black man stand up and talk like I do, it looks strange because I never heard a black man talk like that. That's because you never heard a black man become free. I might not be free physically. I'm forced to be an American citizen in this soil. And my ancestors blood is connected here. But I'm free and I am awakened to your treachery and your deceit because you have been a liar. You was a liar in the beginning and you're a liar now. Because if you weren't a liar, if you were a white man and you call yourself T my friend, then you would tell him you do need to cease and desist. That painting that you're putting before the world about your own people and you're black yourself. But he has become the world's greatest slave. And the thing about being the world's greatest slave. Unlike a pet dog, because a pet is your slave. Oh yeah, you treat them nice and you buy Alpo. Don't buy the generic food. That's, that's bad for your pet. So you think. But your pet is nothing but your slave. But that pet cannot transfer and promote that mentality to the puppies. Because if given a chance, the puppy is out of there. Because even a dog, a puppy, have enough sense. I don't want to be somebody's slave. But black folks have become the world's greatest slave. Instead of trying to separate yourself from the oppressor, you want to be like them, you want to integrate with them, and even teach your children how to be the best slave. How to be the best American citizen that you can be. Why you want to be the best American citizen? Being the best American citizen means you want to be the best liar, the best murderer, the best enslaver. And give the illusion of righteousness when your society is not righteous. Full of not only black people. But your society is full of pedophiles, whoremongers, adulterers, fornicators, drunkards, dope fiends. That's why Mexico is having problems. Because Mexico is trying to feed the dope fiendness of America. And contrary to popular belief, it's the white folks that's doing all the drugs, both legal and illegal. Because first of all, y'all got the money to spend for the drugs. And you already know you're not going to have to do all that prison and jail time and become part of the new modern slavery of a man in America, this prison system that all of these beautiful, wonderful things keep my support. So I cannot affiliate myself with this man who supports evil and unrighteous behaviors. I can't do it. And you can say whatever the hell that you want to say. But that's it. You have to make a choice. Either you're evil or you're good. Righteous or unrighteous. I don't, I'm not going in that direction. Because these scraps that they give us as a people and the smile, fake smile and the handshake don't mean nothing to me. You fool my ancestors. You fool the Native American people. You fool folks all over the earth. But now people should know that you're a snake. And if you continue to get bit, it's not the snake's fault. It's your fault. And I will no longer be bit by the snake because I know better. And I know that this Tiamat, even though he will tell me black unity, I know that he would turn because he likes snakes. And 
being around him since he liked playing with snakes, then eventually in time, if I keep going on a path that I know, because he's loyal to this belief system, then eventually the snake will bite me. And I'm getting the hell out of Dodge before that even happens. So I have no shame. And with no doubt, I didn't know about the attitude of this brother. Yeah, I knew. But I was hoping that if we would align, if he would align himself with me, perhaps he would change or lessen this detrimental position. But after they say six months, it got worse. And at the same time, he decided not to even begin a, a campaign to bring attention to the wicked legal system. Because it is against his policy to blame Caucasian or white people for anything. So you cannot represent black unity unable to speak against the wicked, regardless of color. So again, I say this. I'm not ashamed for making the attempt to unify with another black man. Especially when no others are coming forward. But this union, we can say we try. And unfortunately, it has run its course because this man, t -Mont, likes the idea of black unity but doesn't want to compromise or change self, nor can he bear with views that are other than his own. So, it was in the best interest of both parties that this union be dissolved, and although it is sad, and it is hurtful in the long run, it is about what is good for black unity and what black unity represents. And he does not represent and cannot because he's loyal to the wicked, these demons, these wolves in sheep's clothing. He does he does not represent what is important. His eyes, his ideas does not fit into black unity. This is why upon my announcement of separating myself from this man from many, it brought many applause and cheers. At the same time, if many feel this way, and you are better than this man, then you need to step up to the plate and let us make a better and more powerful example of what black unity really is. If t -Mont doesn't fit into black unity, and he does, does not, then show us what does fit. And I'm happy to say that many are beginning to step to the plate. Only time will tell what the result will be. But time is something we no longer have on our side. It is a fleeting thing and the prophecy of the prophets seem to be coming true. That all humanity, regardless of color, you're on a pathway. And you're headed for destruction. Water lasts in the past. But it is fire this time. There is no doubt that the attitude of black people like t are or one of the reasons why these who are the descendants of slaves are on this path of destruction with the wicked. Remember there are millions of us who think like the minister of truth of Georgia. And unlike slaves. Who have not totally lost their minds. Instead of separation. They seek integration. With their oppressor's children. It is difficult. For a. SWAT sniper. To take out the bad guy. Now listen. In a hostage situation. We are the hostages, the black man and woman in America. We are the, the innocent. We are the hostages held by this wicked nation. We are the children of the kidnap. Instead of the hostage trying to keep him or herself separated from the hostage taker,
so the sniper can get a clear shot, the victim decides to fall in love with the kidnapper or the hostage taker, willing to stand in front of his or her oppressor so they don't suffer harm. And that's what we do in America, these lost, deaf, dumb, and blind black folks. We want to be the white man's guard dog. We're willing to take the bullet. The world's greatest slave. You could not ask for a better guard dog. This is insane. This is crazy. But it is our reality. Our people have fallen in love with those that have taken them hostage and mistreat them because just, and they have the hope one day, they may stop their wickedness against them. But time has determined that your kidnappers, their children, they need to be shot and removed, brought to justice. Battered woman syndrome is where the abused woman views abuse as a sign of love. Post-traumatic slave disorder. The only life these know is that of slavery. So it's very difficult for us to get angry because a slave life is all that we know. They believe, believing in Jesus Christ, having a nice house, driving a fancy car, going to a bar, that's freedom. Much like the pet may believe it is free because it is allowed to run around in the backyard instead of being locked up in the house. So if the dog is used to being locked up in the house all the time, when you let it out in the backyard, it runs around, that's more room, it believes that it is free. You are not free. When that freedom was given to you and controlled by others, and if they can give it to you, they can take it away. So those who think like t -Mont, many of them claim that they're Christians. But due to this unnatural love for the oppressor's children, he ignores the Bible's lessons. When God gives instructions to the oppressed not to integrate with the oppressor. So, of course, this includes do not integrate with the oppressor's children, but to separate from them because God, since he is just, doesn't want to bring harm to the innocent, only seeking punishment or the destruction of the wicked. If God is just, if God is fair, he is only seeking the punishment or the destruction of the wicked, the guilty. You, no matter what black folks have done, it is because of the influence of the wicked. Our hands have been guided by those who are unrighteous, those who are wicked. America, this real Babylon, this real habitation of every foul and Filthy bird is being protected by their modern day slaves, those who think like Tima. At the same time, desperate hostage situations. The sniper has no choice but take a chance and fire. Sometimes this results in the death of the hostage as well. But it is better that a foolish hostage that has fallen in love with their captives be killed in order to free the rest who are still in bondage. And that, my friends, is where we stand. Unfortunately, perhaps millions of black people are destined to die in this transition from this world of unrighteousness to where or to what the Bible states a new heaven and a new earth. Many blacks, I 
call or prefer to call them dark Europeans have decided to be loyal to their oppressors and that's fine. I separate myself from the oppressor as well as the oppressor's guard dogs. These black Christians, how can you ignore the example of Moses who took his people out of Egypt and Lot's family leaving Saddam, sorry Saddam, Sodom and Gomorrah. You ignore those lessons because these Caucasian people, they smile in your face. And they give you the freedom of running around in their backyard. Not your backyard, their back backyard. Because you, a few hundred years ago, you was locked up in the house on their plantation. Now, you think you're free in the backyard because you no longer is on the plantation. But in reality, the backyard and the house is still the same plantation. One just seems to give you a little bit more freedom than the other. How dead in the mind can we be? A pet dog seems to have more sense. Because if you mess around and leave that gate open, a lot of dogs will take off. No Life in their right state of mind, anywhere close, wants to be a servant to somebody else. Our people, of whom have the mindset of a T-Mont, we should not be angry. Listen to me. Don't be, see I'm not angry at T-Mont. Because they just don't know any better. They've been tricked by the master trickologist. Is that a word? Trickologist? The master deceiver. That's why the Arab Elijah Muhammad called them devils. The master manipulator. The master deceiver. However, this doesn't mean we should allow them easy access to our masses to spread their sickness. And we should protect ourselves from them should they also turn to violence against us to feed their illness of pleasing the kidnappers' children. Those like t -Mont. And I'm just saying t -Mont, I'm just talking about this mentality. It's a lot of, in fact, a great majority of our people are like this. But they don't have to stay that way. t -Mont might not stay the way he is. When conditions change. And conditions always change. But we were born into this falsehood. We were born into the lies. We were born into this deceit. It is all that we know. But what is sad. People like him. Manny do know better. He knows. He knows better. But they choose. They choose. To side. With those who have proven themselves. And have a history. Of criminal behavior. Those who practice wrong. Why? Because they smile. Why? Because now. I can run around in the backyard. They change. I ain't in the house no more. I'm in the backyard. Pretty soon they'll put a leash on me and they'll walk me out into the neighborhood. t -Mont will speak of personal choice and responsibility but believes this is beyond him. He has made a personal choice. And that choice is siding with those who practice evil in the guise of brotherhood a wolf in sheep's clothing. This mentality may be more dangerous than the kidnapper himself because since they look like the captives, they look like the hostages, they can go among the hostages or the captives to bring trouble to those of us 
who are seeking to free the victims of the hostage taker. These captives have fallen in love with them. What is fortunate about people like t -Mont for us is that at least he has made it quite clear what he's about. But what about those who are like t -Mont? They might holler black power. So the sniper becomes confused. But again in desperate times brings desperate measures. And the hostage must be shot. These slaves brag about the material things that this wicked and racist society has allowed them to obtain. They brag about how close they are to the slave master's children. They show their loyalty to the slave master's children by showing off as many white or Caucasian as friends as possible. At the same time, they tell these white friends just how savage black people have become. And again, what is so hypocritical, these friendly, quote, non-racist friendly whites will not stop this overzealous Negro from spreading venom about his own people. They like this black nigger trash dark European. They like how he spreads his negativity about his own people. It's entertainment, it's enjoyment, and since they are really racist for real, pretending or wolf in sheep's clothing, that's why they can support and back up this dark European. They do not question the, the dark European of why why are you so negative targeting your own, own people when all of humanity suffers from the same ills? You claim to represent equality and personal responsibility and choices, but your, only, your opinions only reflect a bias and hatred for your own people, offering no solutions at all except infantile name-calling and kindergarten solutions that you got from the Bible. And if these solutions really work from your Bible, and there's a church on every corner, how come it ain't working? And it ain't working for you. Because we see the hate you have for your own people, and this book not supposed to be about hatred. We see the venom, the vulgarity, the profanity, and the anger coming from you, but you're supposed to represent the peace of that, that this book that you claim supposed to represent. Timot's religion at one time being very important in the black community has now proven itself. I don't have to. It has proven itself in the way that it is taught now and presented. It is become a failure in our community. Money, voting, education, religion, all these things have failed the black community. And they will continue to fail because we do not have a knowledge of self. We have no admiration for self. We are, we continue to be dependent on another people for our substance and they, not us, they got us like a leash on a dog. They got us where they want to take us because we are still modern day slaves. Because if you weren't a slave, then you'd be guiding yourself where you want to go. And when you're free, you listen to yourself. You don't listen to your your master. When dogs are free and strays that don't have a master, they listen and make up their own minds about what they do. But when the pet is on a leash under the control of a master, 
then their destiny, everything about them is guided by that hand. So we continue to live in a slave-like condition and Timot's white friends enjoy that. Because in that world, having white skin is an advantage and it keeps them above. So even though Timot is, quote, their friend, they know that they are favored. So all these things have failed the black community. And Tima has no real solutions for this complex problem found in our communities. His only option is just simple, well I'll make fun of you and hope that you straighten yourself out. Is it working? The only thing that's happening is, is you don't believe that you're going to talk about people and they're not going to try to defend themselves. And that's what's happening to you. If this so, if, if his fellow white folks who are also called, so-called uh, Christians, if they were real friends, they would stop this ill behavior that he has, but they won't. Because what is said is, for as they're concerned, everything that T-Mont says is true. Black folks are savages. Tell them about themselves, T-Mont. Don't keep my no. <laughs> Don't keep my no. But when you compare, but when you compare these black folks, you want to call us savages and uncivil. But when you compare us to the savagery of Caucasian folks. In America, around the world, their history speaks for itself. And it is clear and it is written by them. It don't even begin to compare. In fact, we are the way we are because of their savagery. They were the kidnapped. We did not kidnap them. They kidnapped us. And if they... And if the black folks are the savages, then it was the kidnappers who done this to them. As the kidnapper is a savage. And savagery and savageness is all that they know. And of course, in religion, after six days of good savageness, savagery, let us take a rest on Sunday to worship Jesus. <laughs> and you did. So you done had, you done lynch black folks, rape black women, but on the seventh day, it's time to take a rest. And let us teach the slave about Jesus. And we use this book to justify raping black women, lynching black men, because they are no they are no better than the pig or the goat or the sheep or the horse. Subhumans. And this helped justify what they've done to us. And of course, Tima is a good Christian. He supports this. And you really think I can sit back and continue this illusion of black unity. I just can't take it. I could not do it no more. The scriptures tell us you can only serve one master. And many of our people have not chosen the God of righteousness, but the kidnappers' children and their God. So it is impossible that this attitude could ever be part of black unity. But what must be understood, an attempt must be made, a warning must be given as you are taught God is fair and just as well as compassionate. Many 
of our people. Not the whole 40 million, but there are many of our people, just like Timon, they know better. They have made their choice. So must accept responsibility, since that's your favorite word. You made your choice, and you must accept the responsibility for your actions. And I warn those with this mentality. Unlike that of the past, those with dark skin, you have betrayed your own people, mocked, ridiculed, sold your own people out. Unlike of the past, the Benedict Arnold of the so-called black race. Those of you who are among us, you will no longer be fair and pretty. This is the day of separation. And if you choose, due to your sick love, to stand in front of the oppressor, then expect to be shot. As well as be quarantined away from spreading your sickness to our masses that deserve to learn what true freedom is. Not this illusion of freedom. That's why I had to remove myself from this man. Because I don't want to give you an illusion of black unity. This is the reality temple. I want to bring you the real deal. So I want to, I wanted to begin this new period of time and get that off my back. Get that burden. Get that illusion. Get that falsehood. Wipe the record. Stop the snake uh, clear or clean. And now, seek, and now seek unity with those who do have the mentality and really wish black unification. And you cannot seek black unification without pointing to the root of it and the root of it is white supremacy, Caucasian slavery. That must be brought up. We can always do, and we're going to strive to be better, but we're not going to let the oppressor off the hook. That we're not going to do. We're going to remind you, the children of the wicked, because some of y'all are still doing the same type of dirt, but you're doing it hiding behind the law. Hiding behind education, giving us poor education, giving us poor, giving us injustice in your legal system and all your systems that you control. You don't lynch black people with ropes like you used to. You do it by sending us to your prison, poor education, controlling our money, controlling our mind. <laughs> yes. So, I bring this warning to those who think like Tima. Here's a warning. We will fight against you for the souls of our people and humanity in general as all have a right to be free. Free from all the forms of any type of slavery. Whether the the exploitation is due to skin color, gender bias, or class prejudice. These systems and ideas have run their course, found detrimental to human development, and must be destroyed. In conclusion, while many love to hear someone speaking negative about Caucasian people, and that's not my fault. I have to say who did what and tell it like it is. If it's me, I have to tell it like it is. In conclusion, I know there are many of you some of you, and I have said many times, if you are just here to hear me talk negative or speak and remind Caucasian people of their wickedness, and you love that, then you're going to get your feelings hurt because 
There is nobody on this planet that is uh, not uh, in error, that don't suffer fault. There is no righteous people on this planet. That's why the prophets in this book Bible and this book Quran, that's why they give you warning of your destruction because if there were a vast majority of righteous people, there would be no need for this book. There would be no need for that. But you have gone off the correct path. And you don't want to get back on it. And if you don't, then your only destiny is extinction, the destruction in fire of the human race. All of you, black, white, regardless of color, all humanity needs to be destroyed. You like for me to talk about the Uncle Tom type people. I call them dark Europeans. But now it is time to address that other side that which also has become a hindrance and detrimental to black struggle for true freedom. This being what many of us have grown to know of as black conscience. Well, man, black conscience, you would think black conscience, you would think that's something good. To be conscious means you are aware. If you are unconscious, it means you have blacked out, you are unaware. You don't know what's going on. So basically, you are saying, I am aware that I am black. I am aware. I have color. But what you are unconscious of is you are more than color. Color helps only to identify if you are indeed of black conscious. You know, it just means that you, it's a means of identification. But if you indeed are conscious of being black, then you know that our people never called themselves blacks or Africans. These are the descriptions forced upon us by European conquerors. You and I are beyond color. The conqueror created race. The conqueror created color. And he could make himself superior over the masses of dark people he found everywhere that he explored. Trying to return back to African, bragging on a color, if you are indeed conscious, informs you, it informs you that you limit yourself to a color or a continent when you are beyond those things, you have accepted the description of your oppressor of whom you claim that you don't like. The black conscious movement should be about evolving. It should be about developing those who are lost, made deaf, dumb, and blind to the knowledge of self and others and bring them back to themselves and themselves are beyond a color or continent. We are universal and the universe is beyond the planet itself. We are the parents of humanity. We are the original people and all other humanity comes from us. So we have a responsibility to return to ourselves 
so we can properly guide humanity, not just black people, back to the right path because color was designed by a deceiver and an oppressor. We must move beyond color to bring true freedom, justice, and equality to all humanity, animal life, as well as the planet itself. As these things, freedom, justice, and equality, they have no color. Hmm. But you know, but if you hold on to those ideas, that originally came from the oppressor, and that's the problem in black conscience, then you have that same mentality. Then you base everything you do on color. You base everything you do on a place where somebody comes from. Africa. It's all about Africa. It's all about being black. Then you become no better than the white man who say everything of European origin, all the white people is great, better than the dark. America is the greatest, or everybody. Same type of attitude. And you live under that mentality for over 400 years because you're still under it. Do you like it? No. So why would you break that mentality? I'm talking to you, black man and woman. In black conscious. Or are you unconscious? I was told. To. Uh, if someone should criticize. Someone like. Sarah Sutton said. When he spoke about. The approval. Of selling drugs. As a means to survive. And those who criticize that type of talk called an agent or a hater towards this man of whom some think is really out for the upliftment of black people. At the same time, I don't remember no time in our history selling drugs to survive has ever uplifted or did anything for us. The facts show. You know, it's amazing. This is the best that you can do is to suggest to black folks if necessary, sell some drugs to survive. The facts show this suggestion is put into action. It has only caused sickness, murder, material greed, and always taken beyond some sort of survival. So, in order for you to survive, you want to kill other black folks. Well, they're going to buy the drugs anyway, and so you want to help. And since, and since you get your drugs from some outside source, you continue to help those who put you and them in the condition that you're in, help make them rich, and kill your people. Don't make any sense. How could you as a black leader and be of black conscious? But maybe that's what black conscious is. Maybe that's what black gangsterism, power gangsterism, maybe that's what it is. You're looking out for your damn self. Not the people. You're looking out only for your clique. Those who come into your clique. You said black people, but you really only mean your clique. Maybe that's what's really up. So you don't give a damn about those who are not in your clique. So if they are dope fiends, let them keep smoking. Take advantage of them and watch them die so you can survive. Is that what you're telling us? That's what it sounds like. I was told we should also not criticize. And there's a sister that I very much respect and I still love her videos. Our sister calling herself black 
indigo. I think that's how you pronounce it. But she did this. She posted vids and pictures of herself holding some man's penis in a strip club. How does this behavior benefit black conscience? Or maybe it's a part of black conscience. Maybe it is black conscience. Because it seems as though black conscience is nothing but a dark version of white supremacy. And in white supremacy, white women go to strip clubs holding white men's penises and all kinds of filthy behavior. So maybe that is black conscience. I, excuse me. So I guess I'm wrong about black conscience. I thought it was a good thing for us. So as far as I'm concerned, if that is what black conscience is about, then black conscience also has become an enemy to me because I'm speaking and I represent the hurt and the pain of all our people. Not just my clique. Not because they're Christian. Not because they're Muslim. Not because they're dope Because they are simply the descendants of slaves born in America. That's who I stand for. Not my clique. You don't have to follow me or believe anything I say. Just want what is good for our people. And sincerely seek black unity. Seeking a common purpose and a common goal. For the benefit of not the, the success of a clique. Not to make the nation of Islam great. Not to make the black power talk cartel great. Not to make so and so great. But to make us great as a whole people. That's, not, that's what I thought all of y'all were supposed to be about. Maybe that's why you're not unifying with one another. Because you're out for your damn self. So if that's what black conscience is. Now I understand what's going on. How does these behaviors benefit black conscience? Maybe because that's exactly what black conscience really is. A black version of white supremacy. The reason of why the black church is no longer respected is because it is filled with fake folks. It is filled with hypocrites. You can do anything you want at any time and God will accept you. Like Brother Tima spread evil and wickedness, talk real bad about his own people, that's acceptable. The white man can enslave and do whatever he wants to black folks. It's all right. It's acceptable. God forgives. Who cares? Hypocrites. You can do anything you want. In recent times, many houses of religion are being destroyed. At one time, you know, by natural disasters. Tornadoes, like I mentioned before, earlier. Tornadoes destroy uh, churches and mosques. Natural disasters flood them out. At one time, criminals respected the houses of religion to the point even criminals consider the houses of religion sacred ground. But now, you can be easily robbed in a church. You can be killed in a church. Why is this? Because even the criminals, even the criminals know there is no God in his or her or its right mind will support these so-called houses of worship with the people behaving like they do. The only difference between the church and society is that one carries a cross around their neck. Oh, I take that back. I take it back. Because even criminals, <laughs> even criminals carry the cross around their neck. Criminals carry the Bible and 
it is even more sad that criminals even carry the Holy Quran. <laughs> I do not represent black conscience. I represent black reality. In fact, the reality of the human being, period. I am beyond color. But those, but view those called black as those suffering the worst injury. So as in any emergency room, more attention is given to the sickest patient. It is black conscious like religion, whereas anybody can say anything and do anything that they want. Is black conscious about selling drugs to other black people so they can continue to die trying to survive while becoming hooked on material greed? Is it about going to strip clubs and posting your private affairs online, licking a penis and sucking on this when you should be awakening the mind of not only black folk, you should be awakening the mind of the human being, period. We should be awakening minds, not putting them to sleep. When you're telling people to survive and sell drugs to do that, you're putting them back to sleep. When they see you in a strip club, and that's your own business, but when you represent black conscience and they see you in a strip club, drinking and having fun and playing with vaginas and penises, then you put the people back to sleep when you should be awakening their mind. We should be awakening the mind. And if this is the case, then the minister of truth of Georgia is correct. We have been turned into savages. And I'm not going to argue with him about the truth. What I complain about him is to keep calling people savages and whores and thugs and that's not going to change them at all. You have to bring a truth and an example of the love that you claim that you have in from, from the Bible or Quran. Nobody, even you, Tima, nobody, even you, so Rasul said it, or black, indigo, whoever. You cannot get a pleasant response trying to, to degrade somebody and make fun. We already know. We already know we are sick. You do not heal a person with chicken pox with chicken pox by giving them more sickness by showing them that you they look disgusting oh you got chicken but I, you show them and help them get well by saying it's going to be alright you give them medicine you try to make them feel good about themselves you're not going to always have chicken pox try to show them the love that the prophets are trying to express to you in this book holy bible this book called Quran but y'all think talking, trying to be tough and bad, the only result you're going to get is what you're getting. Because anybody that is attacked will try to defend themselves because you do it all the time. They talking about me. They talking about me. Why are they talking about me? And you do whatever you can to try to defend yourself. But you expect others who you talk about, you expect them to... Bear with your madness. No, that's not how it works. White folks attack me 
Because they think I'm trying to hurt them. I'm saying all these bad things. And that's, that's all right. That's all right. And what I'm saying is true. But I'm trying not to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to bring us into this conversation being open and honest. Put everything on the table. Let's be real. And see, there's another thing, t -Mont. You can't be real holding this book. Because in this book, you have to believe. And if God is real, you don't have to believe in him. But you have to believe because it's not real. You hope. You hope that it is real. But if we as a people, if we have become, like T. Mott said, then we are, we have become savages. We have become niggas. We do live in niggerdom. But if you are of Christ, let's up. But if you are of Christ, Jesus did not come to make fun of those dying in sin. He came to bring healing. And since it is clear you are unable to heal, just make mockery of the sick, then aid those who can show they are able to do healing. You don't have the magic. You can't raise nobody from the dead. What you're doing only makes the situation worse. And when people come against you, you think you're doing the right thing. And you're not. Jesus was like a doctor. A doctor does not make mockery of his patient. As he knows they are sick. If he can make them well, then no longer Will they be sick? They would become functioning just like everyone else. But sadly, there are those who like people being sick so they can exploit them. Using them for their own self-interest. So we have two enemies hard at work, brothers and sisters. Trying to keep black people down. We have those of whom we some of us call Uncle Tom. And we also have those involved in black conscience. Two corrupt forms of what I call dark Europeanism. They are working together. One of them has love for the oppressor. The other one is using black as a screen for their own self agenda because clearly they are not looking out for the whole of black people. They are looking out for their clique. Talking about they are uh, seeking something for black folks. But you don't want all black people in your clique. I don't mind brother t -Mont in my clique a part of this. But you can't be part of this when you're working with the enemy who trying to keep this from forming and keep it apart. That is why another way is rising. So you may be able to discern these things and be cautious of both of these things. And that is simply accepting your reality. You have two enemies out there. One black and one white. I have said many times in the past, just because someone is hollering black power or black this or black that, don't mean that it is good for you. This has also been proven. Many blacks are out here to deceive you. Some, it is not the intent, just due to ignorance in general. For example, Tyler Perry may be a good brother, but I cannot support a man wearing a dress because we need strong male role models. Then, of course, it has been brought to our attention that Tyler Perry was also abused as a child. So that also has something to do with his mentality. Again, we are, our people are sick. This 
what this is something some of us who are high and mighty and and and, and holy and self righteous, you must understand people are sick and you can't help it when you get sick. At one time, the female was denied being an actor. So the male had to play the female role. This was called being a hypocrite. Because the male was being something he was not. Then of course, the Caucasian male did not allow black people to act. So, he painted his face and pretended he was a dark person. The enemy will help those that would do a good job keeping you and I, our people, mentally dead. A zombie. Another form and state of slavery. So, you don't see T-Mock complaining about his channel being flagged in any kind of way. Nor is there any bad press against Tyler Perry. In fact, Tyler Perry is given even more power to make other series and, and other non-threatening movies influenced by his version or understanding of Christianity. As you can see, Christianity is still is involved. It was, in, it was involved in slavery from the very beginning and Christianity still plays a role in what is happening to us in America. But religion overall is the number one slave maker. And why is this? In religion, and for some of us, we claim we have become spiritual. Exactly what is, what is spiritual? That's confusing in itself. Another name for spirit is alcoholic beverages. Why does one like these alcoholic beverages? You like these alcoholic drinks so that you can get drunk or so you can get high. Why does one use both legal and illegal drugs for recreation in order to get high. Why do people seek religion so they may feel spiritual, so they can seek the most high? It is all about getting high by any means necessary. Why do you want to get high? I want to get high because I suffer low self-esteem. There's something wrong in my life. Life is harsh. I need to, I need a way out. So I get a way out by going to the liquor store. I, I get my way out of this life that is giving me problems. I want to get away from my problems. So I go to the dope house. So I don't drink. I don't smoke. I need to get away from this. I need to think life has become so depressing. Especially when you're poor. So I go to church. So I can hear that message. So I can get away from it. Because I'm trying to be spiritual. I need to get high. I want to get high. And the desire in itself. There's nothing wrong with the desire. We should all seek to get high. Because we have been made to live low. Compared to our our capability as far as our intelligence but we have we have a severe problem in our attempts to get high the methods we have chosen to use cause us to become drunk and when you become drunk you become distorted unable to think unable to tell the differences between fantasy and reality truth and falsehood Trying to get high damages the mind. And once we become sober, sometimes we have to be told what we did. When we are getting high or drunk, we are no longer of ourselves. We are now under the influence of some drink, drug, or
or religious or so-called spiritual teaching. Because getting high makes you drunk. You are no longer yourself. So clearly we become a more lost and confused people because we believe experiencing a certain physical feeling is getting high. And in seeking being high, we become drunk. You cannot fight a revolution being drunk. And our enemies know this. You cannot, you cannot fight effectively under the influence of being high. The European introduced fire water and his Christian religion to the native people as well as his black slaves. And he did that not to help you he did that to keep you drunk, chasing a false high. And that's what it is. It's a false high. A drunk people cannot free themselves. Black conscience has now entered that realm. Designed originally, black conscience was designed originally, I believe, to help free the enslaved. Now it also helps to enslave. This moonshine was self-created. The things we do trying to get the spirit, trying to get close to God. And like the Quran said, I believe it's from the Quran. Satan told God, I will be waiting for them in their right path, not the bad path. Because if you are in the bad path, you already were the devil or Lucifer or Satan. You already going where they want you. But God is being told by Lucifer, the deceiver, I'm going to wait for your children in the right path. Brothers and sisters, it is not about hatred or anger or dislike against anybody. It is simply the desire to get high or seek a higher self to return to what we view of as God because we have suffered so terrible in this life. We only want to go home. We want heaven because we've endured so much hell. The problem is the deceiver has come into the right path bringing us more confusion. What is the right path? Now the deceiver has come up through us into black consciousness. So that which was used to free us, now it is used to continue to enslave us. The problem is, is, is again, the deceiver has come into the right path, bringing more confusion. And in that confusion, we don't know. We don't know what to do. So we begin to strike out against ourselves. And those things that perhaps mean us no harm. We become critical of ourselves when we should become more understanding and compassionate towards another black man or woman. The black. So, in conclusion, and I mean it this time, <laughs> this is part three. In conclusion, I am simply. Saying to us that we should heed this warning, whereas black conscience, I am very sure, was created and designed to help uplift us out of a horrid condition. There's no doubt. But according to this book, Quran, the devil, and perhaps even the Bible too, I'm very, uh, I'm not as uh, up on religious teachings like I used to, but the devil or Lucifer, Shaitan, tells God, I'm going to mess with your people. 
I'm going to wait on them as they journey down the right path. There's no doubt that we should be conscious at this time of the black. But as you walk this wonderful path, there are devils hiding behind the black, pretending to be conscious when in fact they may be Satan or Shaitan. I'm going to wait for them as they journey the right path. My New Year's resolution is to armor myself with more firepower. And what, pray tell, would that firepower be? Right here. It is called Holy Quran. It is right here called the Holy Bible. Because those of whom I am attempting to speak with and wish to warn, since I must speak the language of those of whom I was sent to, those of whom I bring warning to, I must come from a place where they are familiar and we are familiar with these great books. It just so happened that I have not touched my Quran of which I value so much. And I value these books because of their wisdom if you understand the lessons being said or shown in these books, both Holy Quran and this book called the Bible. In fact, really, if y'all were following the Quran in the Bible the way you should, I would not even exist because you would be on the right path, but because Shaitan or the devil have corrupted or your understanding in your path to God using these books. Now you're confused and you messed up. And instead of separating yourself from the world of the wicked, you have become part of it. It just so happened I have not touched my Quran in who knows. But when I did, it just so happened to open up right here. It opened up to the 103rd chapter called the time. And I'm going to finish this video lecture. And thank you. This video lecture lasted almost three hours. I was unable to get the last part on, the, uh, on part two. So thank you for being here in this conclusion. But the 103rd chapter of the Holy Quran is called The Time. It is very short. So... Please bear with me as I recite the passage. It says, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, by the time, surely man is in loss, except those who believe and do good, and exhort one another to truth, and exhort one another to patience. By the time, there's a time. And time expires. For surely man is in loss. Except those who believe and do good. There's plenty of belief. But are we doing good? And exhort another one to truth. And exhort another one to patience. You got to have patience because the people are in a bad condition. When somebody was in a car accident and they are crippled, you have to be patient in their recovery. You can't expect them to get up and walk overnight. 
Matter of fact, it's a possibility they may not be able to walk at all. So in order to treat that person, to attempt to help them heal from that injury, you have to have patience and exhort one another to truth. But see, you don't have to exhort one another to truth if you have the truth. But see, if you just believe, you don't have the truth. If you have the truth, there's no need to believe. Because having the truth is facts. We must be patient with one another. So that all can experience the truth. But surely man is in law because many of us are comfortable in this evil. The 104th chapter, right next, common sense tell us, to the 103rd, is called the slanderer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, woe to every slanderer, defamer, who amasses wealth and counts. He thinks that his wealth will make him abide. Nay, he will certainly be hurled into the crushing disaster. I am at this time dealing with the slanderer. Those who stay on my page, those who stay around just to find something to slander my name. Surely man is in loss. And they believe they contain great wealth. Which will make them abide. Which they believe makes them or gives them, it, them the illusion that they are correct. That they hold some type of truth. But again, their truth they must believe in. And if you have to believe in it, it ain't true. Because either you have a book in your hand or you don't. The truth is... I have a book in my hand. Now, if you don't see that book, and I tell you, you have to believe a big difference. And that's what I want us to get up out of. It's fine to have faith. It's fine to believe. But sooner or later, we got to get to the point where we dealing with our reality and actual fact. Nay, the slanderer, the, the, the defamer, he will certainly be hurled into the crushing disaster. You already have gotten a taste messing with me. Any attempt to mess with this real truth, only thing it's going to do is gain you a hurling disaster. You can't do nothing with me. You can try to attack the messenger. You can talk about my bald head or my Malcolm X, uh, whatever this is, what you call it, a badge, a pen, however. You can talk about me. You can talk about, wow, you'll be happy if t call called you, whatever you want to say. But there's one thing that's going to lead to your disaster. And that is messing with the real truth that I represent. That you can't do nothing with. And you already know. Because you have been hurled into disaster lots and lots of times. You can't do nothing with me. Brothers and sisters, it is not about hatred or anger or dislike against others. It's simply the desire in our attempt to seek a higher self, spirituality. Some of us, we turn to the bottle. Some of us turn to smoking weed, illegal dope. Some of us, we turn to the church. We turn to the mosque. We're trying to get high, to seek a higher self, to return to what we view as our godhood. Because we feel that there's something bigger and greater than who we are. We have suffered 
so terrible in this life. We're not bad people at all. We're not savages. But we just want to go home like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. But see, in that story of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, she did all that to try to go home. But when it was all said and done, brothers and sisters, Dorothy had the power. She didn't have to look for no wizard. We don't have to look for God. God gave us the power when we were born to solve your problems and to do whatever you want to do. It's just like depending on your parents and they are deceased. So you seek to pray to them and honor them even though they are physically gone. There's nothing going to happen but your parents, if they were good parents, sent you to school. And taught you lessons so that you can take care of yourself. And that's the reality of God. He wants you to grow up and take care of yourself. And you want to seek yourself. So Dorothy, the only thing she had to do was click her heels. And she went home. Brothers and sisters, the only thing we have to do is begin to click our heels. The power of that we pray for, the power that we that we sing and dance for is right here in all of us. Instead of looking for a wizard. We're not angry, bad, we're not savages. We just want to go home because we suffer so much hell and I don't blame you for over 400 years mistreated, misunderstood, don't know who we are, we're in bad shape, I want to get out of this fire, talking about hell, can it get any worse for a black man or a black woman? The problem is the deceiver has come into the right path to bring us more confusion and in that confusion we don't really know what to do. So we begin to strike out against ourselves and those things that perhaps mean us no harm. We become critical of ourselves when we should become more understanding and compassionate towards one another. The black conscious community must understand that this enemy could care less about your melanin theories, your threat to physically harm him because when it's all said and done, this wicked and shrewd enemy controls the masses of our people. The vast majority of our people, unfortunately, at this time, until we can awaken them and bring the light to a mind that was born into darkness, the mass the mass majority of our people are like or even worse than brother Derek Grayson. Y'all know him as t or the Minister of Truth of Georgia. And we of whom have become enlightened, those of us who are part of this black liberation movement, we have failed to as individuals, we have failed to rid our mind of the influence of the oppressor. That's why we cannot unify with one another. That's why you got a problem with me. I don't have no problem with no black man or woman who are of black conscious. But black conscious, just a name, but in your mind, you still think like the oppressor. And like I said before, some of y'all have a Another agenda hiding behind black. You don't really understand your enemy, this Caucasian, this racist Caucasian people, the elite, those who are in power and in control. You paint them. 
as some simple caveman. When this white man, this Caucasian, is well beyond a simple caveman. He's no longer that. In this world, this Caucasian has become a God. And a God is only that which has force and power. He is the power. He no longer depends on just brute strength. And that's where you're at. You think you're going to defeat him with nothing but brute strength. He depends on his cunning. He has many other talents. He's the master deceiver. He is indeed a devil. And remember that the devil is second to God himself. The only one that has been able to give God problems. And only a God can deal with a God. It would take more than just being conscious of a black description that this God created. He created black. Black power. Power for black. What are you saying? You want to continue to give him power because he created black. You did not. And you're hooked and obsessed with his color because the original people did not call themselves Black or African. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that we were Asiatics because this planet at one time was called Asia. So those human beings that live on Asia are Asiatics. This color, black, was an influence once we become under the control of the oppressor. And he made you Africans. He made and gave you a name that sounds savage. Uncivilized. You, you African. You black African. <laughs> Until you accept this reality. Against this God. You will fail. Failure is the only result. Liberation is a facade. Based on these things mentioned, if we cannot clear this hurdle, then prophecy of the prophets will come true. This is why I say that upon the destruction of this wicked world, many black people will die. They have fallen in love with sin. As sin has become the only thing that they have known. It's just like a house pet only knows the house. It seems as though the reality will be many of, of us will die. Because since we refuse to separate ourselves from that which the creation and what God says in this book, Quran, and those that this book says, Bible, the wicked, God asks us to separate ourselves. First we do it mentally. Then we must do it physically. Otherwise, the hell, the punishment that is meant just for the guilty will also fall upon you. So, many black people, because we don't know no better, and some of us have a, we are in love with sin. We are in love with this wickedness. Then many black people will also die. They have fallen in love with sin. It's been the only thing that they know. Having these who are the descendants of slaves in America have no idea what it means to live truly free. It's like a dog. Your pet. You know, y'all like pit bulls. The pit bull that you have, these animals have never known what it means to live outside your house, live outside the leash, be out there in the free world. 
So many of us will die because we are dependent upon a people of whom the creation in God has determined their world must come to an end. And if you embrace them and if you continue to hold on to their past legs, then you must be destroyed with them. And I don't care how much you pray to Allah. I don't care how much you pray to Jesus. I don't care who you pray for. It is in the process as I speak. And as I speak, you're going down with them. I am nothing but a warner. There are many warners out here. And I warn the black conscious community, you will also fall because you refuse to embrace your brothers and your sisters like you should. And you continue to have the mind of the oppressor. And anything of the oppressor must be destroyed. Because if it is not, a new heaven and a new earth, a new time period cannot come into existence. And it must come into existence. The Bible says it must come to existence. The Quran also says it. Time for a new world order. Not the new world order that your elite Caucasian people in power believe they are trying to put into place. But something that demonstrates true justice, equality and freedom for the male, for the female, no matter what your color. Give justice to the animal life. Bring peace and tranquility and bring a respect back to this, to Asia, this planet that we now call Earth. Perhaps it is best those with the mentality of the oppressor we have become evil and wicked. So maybe for me since we have become evil and wicked for me I, if I could talk to God directly I would say do it now. Destroy us. It can only get worse. We're not getting better. But if we can get better then time is running out. Y'all brothers and sisters black man and woman white folks Native Americans Chinese whatever you're all in bad shape. If you don't straighten up your act, extinction for all of you. There's no doubt about that. So maybe since you don't want to straighten up, it is better that you be destroyed. So if we're going to continue to be like this, the only thing you can do is pass it on to future generations. And future generations deserve better than what we're going through and what we are doing. It's not fair to them because we're smarter. We're supposed to be human beings. We're supposed to be more intelligent. And the only thing we have become, and even though we had these books, Holy Bible, and even though we have these books, Quran, Many teachers, many other different forms of intellect. The only thing we have become is an intelligent savage. And, and an intelligent savage will not be allowed in that which becomes new. Because you will not taint. You will not. You will not bring your stench to something that is brand new, because that which is brand new will be in accord and in the balance of that which brought us into creation, so that it can do what the human being, because of material greed, because of lust. The lust for children, the lust for money, the lust for to kill animals, the lust to destroy the planet. That system, that mentality is over. It's had its time, it's run its course, it is detrimental to us. So either we stop or 
we will be stopped. Future generations of human beings deserve better. But you don't want to do better. And if that's the way it is, then you deserve extinction. I want to be able to say that I tried. That's all one can do. Is I tried to warn them. I tried to warn us. But us would listen because we got our own agenda. This ministry, the number one priority, of course, is black people because of our injury, which has caused fatality. But this message and what I represent is for the whole of humanity. Your children, your future generations deserve better. You deserve better than what we're going through. It was the failure of our past generations that put us in the position that we're in. And if you say that you're different, then it's time to straighten up. If you say that you're different, that which we know of as the Ku Klux Klan will dissolve. That mentality will go away. That mentality of black power this and black power, those mentalities will go away. But we must deal with these things in an open and honest manner. Put the cards on the table just how they are and deal with things. Real truth hurts. Yeah, our feelings. Y'all need to stop being childish. Your feelings don't get hurt because you don't want to hear bad things about your grandmother. You don't want to hear bad things about your grandfather. You don't want to hear bad things about the president. You don't want to hear bad things about yourself. But truth hurts. Deal with the truth. Because if you don't deal with the real truth and your reality, then you don't have to worry about it too much longer. And you know how it is when you're sick. Some of us, they tell you to stop smoking, but you won't because you enjoy the smoke. Oh, I, man, I just love, you love the pleasure of smoking the cigarette. I don't care. I don't. You got to die from something. But look how they die. Their body, their skin, you begin to shrivel up. You start feeling these hurts and pains. You, they put you on this machine and they start sucking the, the, this tar build up in your lungs. It's a horrible, slow death. And that is what's happening right now. Because we've fallen in love with cancer. We've fallen in love with this cigarette. We don't care because we feel a little healthy. But as a sickness or a disease progresses, it gets worse. And you can't hardly breathe. And you start to hurt. And pretty soon... You can't even do for yourself. You end up in a hospital bed in your own machines and they force to keep you alive. That's the situation that we're in. So I suggest to us to think about this. Think about it. Think about what black power really means. Think about what white power really means. Think about this world that we live in and what generations of corrupt people have built. Those of us who are righteous, you should have no problem with this message because you should be happy that some God or creator has taken, decided to take control and take those unworthy of life because they are corrupt, because they are intelligent savages. Take them out of power. Because they don't deserve and have not earned life. They are the takers of life. They are the bringers of death. They are the gods of deceit, falsehood, and destruction. Your choice. The only thing I can do is tell us. You have, the Bible says, 
free will. And I'm freely out of here. Thank you for listening to your brother Talik Ibn Ra. This was a long one. I'm glad that you came on this journey with me. I love my friends and subscribers. I would like to also thank my brother and minister, student and minister, Andre Edman69, for his continued support and encouragement until the day he comes back out here and joins me in this effort to continue to promote what we call real truth. Thank you for listening to your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. Peace forever and always, and respect y'all till next time.